Hi, welcome to the channel. This is Yvonne from Ginger Trick Rehab. Thank you for popping on and checking out what I am up to. So in today's video, we are doing a true trash, or, <laughs> trash to treasure furniture flip. Between me and my husband, Chris, we are trying to save these furniture pieces from the landfill and sometimes you buy a piece and you think oh it just needs a little bit of glue a little bit of work and it'll be fine but some pieces you get into it and you're like oh my gosh what was i thinking so as you look at this from afar it looks pretty darn good it looks like a solid piece of wood it's got all its hardware it is a nice huge dresser one of the things that we always try to have on hand always try to have some type of a dresser in our retail booth to resell but as you start playing with it yes it oops it is looks can be deceiving y'all so once you get your hands on something yes lots of pieces and parts have seen better days on this piece it must have been dropped but never fear we're always a glutton for punishment here on ginger chick rehab channel and yes we will try to get this back together so stay tuned to see if we achieve that now you have to assess what degree the top is loose is it all the way loose or like in this piece the nails are kind of in there they're not in there but for some, whatever reason they won't go back in there and you don't really want to hammer on that wood it's not going to be a tight bond so he's going to go ahead and get those little brand nails cut and so that way he can get a fresh bond when he goes to glue it for, with a wood to wood bond if he needs to renail it you just want to make sure that all your all your pieces and parts have that tight fit back together. And then the nice thing about the type on wood glue, it is strong. It is, it is made to do what it says, glue two pieces of wood together. So as long as he gets a, a good clean area to get the glue in there and then really clamp down on those clamps and then let it sit overnight this should be a perfect bond to fix this top. And part of flipping the secondhand furniture is you're always in hope that the pieces and parts are there. So I we love the detail on the bottom of these older pieces. I just think it's character, just a personal. I know a lot of people cut them off and they put new bases on. It's just a personal preference. <laughs> so for this one, yes, there is a pieces and parts of the puzzle that can be put back together. So the same thing, get some of that nice tight bond glue, make sure that the two areas are nice and clean there's no nail sticking out there's no extra glue that is going to eliminate the wood to wood to be bonded back together so same thing gluing it together clamping it off and letting it sit <laughs> Have you ever all put a puzzle together and realized there were pieces missing? Yes, when we bought this piece, we thought all the pieces were in the drawers. But nope, sadly, they were not. So now he's going to have to create an extra piece of wood. It's minimal. His, his woodworking skills are way above what I could do personally. So I'm happy that we can tag team projects like this. Because sadly, I don't know what I would have done if I would have been the one having to make it. Because I don't really like to use cutting tools. I probably would have used a whole bunch of paint st sticks or something to build up for the matching piece I i'm being honest here y'all but anyway so that's all he's doing is taking an extra piece of wood matching up the thickness to get that same grain pattern going the same way even though we're going to be painting you're not going to see it so yep he just matched it right up so yes i am glad that we are able to tag team projects like this
And then now it's time to come back in with some wood filler. And he's got some Durham water putty mixed up. If you have not used Durham water putty, it is a dry, dry powder that you mix with water. So you just mix up the consistency that you need. It doesn't really matter if you want it thin or thick for whichever project you're working on. So now he needs to fill in all these cracks where these pieces were broken off. I don't know if you all noticed that when he was cutting that piece, it was not just a straight square box piece. As you see, he has a pencil mark. He matched it up to the other side because there is a little bit of rounded edge. So now when, as he's going in and sanding it, he's trying to keep to his pencil line so it is a match on the other side. Now for the detail of the curve, he's going in with a metal file and what this is doing is just giving him a little bit more control than he has with the orbital sander. That way he can keep that curve by being able to go in very gingerly. You can really start to, to see the curve start to form. that he has that sanded it's time to go in and sand all that dry putty getting that nice and smooth along with scuff sanding the rest of the piece to get it prepped for painting go ahead and use our sprayer on this piece especially when you have a massive dresser like this so he's going to go ahead and tape off the inside of the drawers the inside of the drawers are in wonderful condition there's no reason to paint them so just putting a layer of tape some plastic to wrap them up making sure there's no little holes or anything anywhere in your plastic and your tape is key because that spray paint will find its way to wherever there is a gap Finally getting to the part where we get to paint the piece, but first off we have to prime the piece. This is that type of wood that if we were to go to paint it, um, it will probably yellow my white paint. So a good primer is going on. This is a Rust-Oleum primer and I'm having really good luck with the red one, which seems weird that it eliminates the yellowing, but it is a wonderful primer and it's nice that you get to spray it on. And yep, tag, <laughs> I'm in now. So it is the, yes, Chris does a lot of the working on the furniture in the weekend. And then when it comes to Monday, yep, whatever's left over is what I start working on. He really got quite a bit of it done over the weekend. <laughs> yep, this isn't something that happens all in one day, you fo folks. This is a large dresser that needed a lot of work. So I'm using Kills Paint and Primer in one. And then um, my True Coat 360 handheld sprayer, my go-to, absolutely love this sprayer. And then I just go very gingerly making sure that I'm overlapping each spray. And you know what's really crazy, even though we primed this piece, we sanded, we prepped them, 
look at that. We still have some problem areas that are bleeding through. And that happens with white paint, y'all. You see every little detail that pops out underneath a, a white paint. So to shellac I go, and that's going to stop that from happening. It's going to seal it in. So wherever there's any of those spots leaking through. And this was after two coats of a paint. Yep, and a primer underneath. It is what it is. It, it is actually not as easy to paint white as one may think. After adding one more layer of paint over the top of the shellac, now I'm sealing the paint in with a layer of polycrylic. So I actually like to seal my white paint in before going and sanding it with some polycrylic. This prevents any marks from happening on the white paint. And now I'm going back in with some 220 sandpaper. I'm going to make sure that everything is nice and smooth, along with going over all those sharp edges, going down to the wood and distressing the piece. It's still a look that is still selling really, really well for us. Just bringing out those beautiful details that are hidden underneath that paint. You could sand by hand, but since I put a top coat on there, it is a nice finish and it'd take a lot more elbow grease to get down past the layers of paint, past the shellac, and past that primer to the real wood. So it's nice to be able to use the orbital sander to help me along to do this. I have everything sanded the way that I want it. I've blown it off with the air compressor, wiped it down with a towel to make sure that it's dust free. I'm now going in with some Verithane clear wax and giving it one more layer of top coat, sealing in those areas where I got that down to the raw wood, and then just putting one more layer of extra protection on that white paint. Now I have to be a little bit careful and keep my eyes peeled because a lot of times since I use that red primer, you might see like a little pinkage pinkish hue of where it is picking that primer up so I just make sure that I wipe that area off and once that wax dries it is sealed in. Brushing up the inside of the drawers, I switch over to the Howard's Wax. This is a citrus one that leaves the drawers refreshed, giving them a nice drink of moisture to fill in that wood that has been dry over time along with making them smell yummy. Since all the hardware was there, I'm going to go ahead and get that all cleaned up. I love the character of old hardware. So just some Dawn dish soap, some hot water, let it dry, get it sprayed up with some Rust-Oleum the paint and primer in the flat black and then seal that hardware in with some polycrylic. And now we're on the home stretch because all we need to do is add the hardware back in. So this guy needed no work other than a new paint job. I love to have these chunky bedside tables in when we have a dresser in together because people like the matching set. So even though this one did not need any work, I did the same process of sanding it, priming it, and painting it and distressing it and adding that black hardware so you have two matching pieces. But this corner cabinet is a whole different story. Oh my gosh, I love when we run across corner cabinets. When I saw that bead board, it had my heart. But when we bought it at the auction and Chris even 
touched it to move it, yeah, the top came right off. So it's actually not real wood, folks. Nope, it is just a press board. There you go. You know, I thought I touched and filled it and I thought it was all good, but nope, it is one that I'm like, oh, shoot. So anyway, we're going to see if we can salvage this one because the corner cabinet and the beadboard, oh, I really want to make it work. yet again either all the joints have come loose because it has been dropped or you can see water damage at the bottom because of course when mdf board gets wet it swells so yeah this is not just a okay put some glue back together type of piece and yep the top wasn't even real wood either if you all have ever bought a piece of furniture from Ikea, you know the system that he's working with. It's that twist system that then puts a metal rod up into the other piece, and they're never a tight bond. They do not stay tight for whatever reason. The theory is good, but they just loosen up. So yes, with movement of the press board moving, whatever have you. So yes, that's what he's removing right now, that rod that it presses up into the other piece and that screw. I really do think if you get an Ikea piece or one of these put together type of pieces and you run a bead of tight bond glue, the wood to wood glue, that it probably would not shift and come apart like they always seem to do. So that's what he's doing here. He's just going to reapply that top. We're going to fill in those holes. No worries, y'all, but it's already got the character to match. And for cost efficient, I probably overpaid for a piece of MDF board at an auction. <laughs> I think I gave, um, yeah, I think 20, 30, 40. I can't remember right offhand what I gave for this, but I know it was under 50. And once he went to move it, we both knew that I had overpaid for it when that top came off. So yeah, maybe if you get one of those type of pieces and you are able to glue, I know they are meant to, um, be put together easily without minimal tools, so everybody can have nice pieces of furniture in their home. But yes, yeah, so that's what he's doing. Just getting it tightened back down. And then working with press board, that is that white is just a paper it's just a paper applied over the press board so very gingerly is he going in with a razor blade scraper and as you see just taking that paper right off You really have to be careful when sanding press board because a lot of times what that does is the sandpaper roughs up that MDF board and makes it really raised. So if you can scrape off with a scraper, it's still a little bit better if you can. And now what he's doing is going back in and fixing all the holes, all that water damage that he'd scraped off where it puckered the paper, just some Durham water putty that he mixed up to the consistency that he needs. And now it's time to go in with the orbital sander and sand all that nice and smooth. And as I said before, remember, this is just a paper over press board. So you really do have to go in very gingerly. You don't want to have a high grit, a low number sandpaper. So just the 220 and then just light hand so you're not pressing down hard. You don't want a lot of that MDF being raw and showing. Now, after I got the piece all sanded, there's still some gaps. So some of the gaps before we even get to paint it are going to be filled in with caulk. Remember, white paint does not hide anything. White shows everything. So if I would have painted this piece black, it, you know, the gaps kind of would have been just a shadow and you wouldn't have seen them. I still probably would have filled them anyway. But yes, some caulk to get any of those gaps filled in. So we're going to go ahead and prime this piece too, still using that Rust-Oleum primer in that red. And oh my gosh, this stuff is amazing on MDF board. It is one of the reasons that we have 
had it and purchased it in our arsenal is when we come across MDF board. And so now we just, this is the primer that we end up using. So he's going to go ahead and get this all sprayed in. That'll get that um, prosody evened out where you've got the paper over the press board. You've got the press board showing. You've got your germ water putty showing. You just need to even out your porosity. Then along with that primer gives that outer paint something to grab onto. It gives a wonderful bond. And yes, this is one of those opportunities where when we're doing multiple pieces, it kind they kind of need the same work level done on them and they're going to get the same type of paint job. So that's why we like to group projects in it together. And I just love corner cabinets. So I'm glad that he was willing to work on this. I'm sure we both looked at that when we saw that top come off and saw that it was press board. Like, oh man, this piece got me. Because you don't pull it out at an auction. This was our hometown auction. But it's fine because I know, I know we can save this from the dump pile. Don't think it didn't come across our mind when it that tip the top came off when we were bringing it home going oh we might as well just burn this but no nope sometimes you walk away and you're like okay we can save this piece it is amazing what just a little bit of paint and a lot of hard work previously because look at this piece just looks amazing with the wet paint on it so I'm going to go ahead and the same thing, I'm going to seal that white paint in using some polycrylic. Oh, I just love a beadboard, y'all. It just really is an amazing piece once we got it all painted. And now I'm going to go back in with that 220 sandpaper. I'm just very gingerly going to hold the orbital sander to get it to sand it down nice and smooth along with still distressing those edges. I'm not going to distress the beadboard like I would usually do. Um, that's just, it's a little bit harder to get in there and get it to be even, but I'll go ahead and do the details on the outer of this piece. It's the same thing when I'm waxing on this piece to give it that nice finished top coat. I need to double check where I had gotten down to the raw wood and make sure that none of the wax is mixing in with any of that primer, making little pink areas. <laughs> So would have you have fixed these pieces? Would you have like, oh my gosh, that top is completely coming off. How do I fix that bottom? Yeah, that was something I probably couldn't have done myself. I can glue pieces back on, but I don't know if I can create, maybe with maybe with paint sticks. How many layers of paint sticks can you have and hide it with wood body? <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding, y'all. I'm just kidding. So anyway, yes, and it turned out absolutely beautiful, sticking with the classic white. That is what sells, adding that little bedside table. So if you put it in our retail booth that we have like two coordinating pieces, if there's room, there's not always room. And then that, oh my gosh, corner hutches. I just absolutely love hutches. And then a corner hutch. And then I, we both looked at each other. If you could have saw our eyes when he lifted that up and that top came off and we realized that we'd already paid for it and it was MDF board. I'm like, ah, shoot. Yeah, sometimes that gets you sometimes when it's painted. You just, you just don't know. But it was a beautiful save. It's a beautiful piece now. I love it with my crockery on it. And if I had another place in my house, I would be keeping it. So let me know down in the comments below. Have I inspired you? Have we inspired you in any 
way to look at secondhand finds in a new way. And thank you so much for being part of our YouTube family. And if you are doing your checking out our channel for the first time and you like what you saw, please hit the subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye!